The key to you creating your dream life is not necessarily wiring in. It's not taking some type of affirmation and adding to it and adding to it. It's actually more something completely different. This is the switch for me that changed everything. In 2017, I was working a nine to five job I hated. I was doing affirmations. I was sitting on the couch thinking about what I wanted, but I couldn't figure it out. Now that's because the key for this is this analogy right here. Imagine that this represents your old life. This represents your past. This represents uh, the beliefs you tell yourself about who you are, the stories you have about the way reality works. Now what a lot of times we're doing is to create our dream life. What we're doing is we're taking this representing our dream life and we're starting to fill up this other cup. The thing is, is we can only fill it up so much because it's already full of the stories we've been telling ourselves. It's already full of the negative emotion maybe we've been through. And the challenge is there's no room to really put the vibe of our dream life. Now that's why the key to you creating your dream life is actually letting go of the old and then as you empty yourself out, what you do is you then allow more space so that you can fill up your cup of the vibration that you really prefer. This is the biggest key. It's letting go. When you let go of attachment, you then energetically free yourself of the past, and from that point, you then begin to wire in a new reality. Welcome back to another video. My name's Aaron, and I help people expand their consciousness. Now, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the key to creating your dream life and how to really exponentialize the process so it happens quicker than ever. Now, a lot of this has to do with first off, the first step. The first step is you must become aware of what was in your cup. So for me, back in 2017, I was working that job at Barney's New York selling women's shoes. I'd wear a suit every day to work. I wasn't passionate about it, but I thought that that's how reality had to be. At the basis, you know, think about it. A lot of people go to jobs they hate, not realizing that they're choosing to go to the job, that they have a choice. They could choose not to go in the next day. And then normally they'd say, well, if I choose not to go in the next day, then I'm not gonna have paycheck or money coming in. But the challenge is that's what keeps us trapped. We believe that reality is fixed. We believe that we have to do that which we've been doing. So for years, I sold women's shoes. I worked at Barney's New York for five years, and then I worked for three to five years at uh, no, I worked for four years at Barney's New York and I worked for five years at Nordstrom's before that in women's shoes. And I remember just feeling stuck. I didn't know what to do. And one of the biggest changes for me is I had to look at my life and I had to take ownership and become aware of where I currently was. I had to become aware of the stories I had about who I am. I had to become aware of the self image that I have. I realized that I saw myself as a nine to five job goer and I realized that a lot of that was justified, you know, also it wasn't bad money, I just wasn't passionate about it. It's probably making 50, 60K a year, and that wasn't that bad, especially for that, you know, like age of my life. And I realized that a lot of that key was I had to let go of viewing myself as a nine to five job goer. My reality was a direct reflection of the way I saw myself. I saw myself as a nine to five nine to five job goer, I'd go into work every day, I would complain to my coworkers about how slow it was, and that was my reality. And my thoughts, my actions, and my feelings were equal to that reality. So the first thing I had to do is I had to become aware of that. So right now, what are you experiencing in your life? Become aware that your story about who you are and the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions are equal to the reality you're in. And the best way, if you don't know what that is, is just to look around. When you look around in your life and what you're experiencing, if you're in a relationship that's unfulfilling, or you're single, or you're experiencing, um, you know, you're at a job you hate, it's because you've allowed it to be there, and the first step is taking ownership of that and letting go of the story believing that you're trapped. I used to think I was trapped in that nine to five job. Until I saw myself as choosing it, what happened is that was on autopilot. So the first thing is to become aware of the thoughts, the self image, and the uh, stories you have about where you are in life. That's the first step to this process and it is extraordinarily important to become aware of it. Now once you become aware of the story, 
you can then become aware that then you can begin to question that story. See that it's just been on autopilot. Then what you can do is you can wake up. And when you wake up, then what you can do is you could focus on being aware of it and then wiring in something new. But you have to let go, first off, of the where you were. I realized that nine to five job I had felt safe to me. I got a certain paycheck. If I was to go full time doing what I love, I would, um, you know, a lot would change in my life. I then maybe people would judge me. I would, I cared a lot about what people thought, especially back in the day. So there's these things called payoffs. So payoffs right here, payoffs. Payoffs are the things that keep us tied and attached to the old. The payoffs could be that it justifies where you are. Some of the reasons it's so hard to let go of a painful past is because if we're afraid, if we let go of the painful past, then what'll happen is it will, uh, it kind of invalidates our life in a way. We also really wanna be right. It's one of the, the dirtiest highs we get is when we're right. So it invalidates what we experienced in our past. So the key is becoming aware of what these payoffs are. And my payoff of working that nine to five job, by the way, was that I felt safe. I didn't have to step into the unknown. People weren't questioning me. But what I eventually had to do is become aware of that payoff and realize that it's not serving me anymore. So look at the payoffs in your life. If you're in a, uh, relationship that is abusive, the payoff you might be getting is it's a relationship nonetheless. It may be uh, reflecting back to you that you don't feel worthy and that it, maybe that's a feeling that you had in childhood and that feels comfortable. Comfort is a payoff that will rob us of really going forward with what we will want. So a big part of creating your dream life is letting go of the stories, letting go of the beliefs, letting go of the attachments you have, and then making the choice to step into the new, to step into the new. So it's letting go and wiring in. And for me, I let go of the nine to five job that I had. I didn't quit right away. What I did is I let go of viewing myself that way. I let go of the story. And then what I did is I simply started to wire in and be, this is the most important thing, I started to be a full-time YouTuber even though my reality wasn't reflecting that yet. So what you do is you focus on the thoughts, the feelings, and the emotions of the version of you that's doing what you love, that's living in your dream life, and you simply decide that that's who you are now. You take on the identity itself. And as you're being that, and because you've already become aware of your old story, you begin to let it go. As you're being that, because it's who you choose to be, that's when your reality will begin to change on the outside. The way reality works is be, do, have. You must first be it, then you can naturally do it because that'll feel natural and easy. You won't put things on a pedestal and then you will have that which that version of you has. So be it, take on the identity, do it for an end of itself. When people get on YouTube, by the way, and their intention is to gain a lot of followers and to become like well-known, it normally doesn't do well because they're not doing it from their passion. It's not as authentic. And people can feel that. People can feel authenticity. So when I first was visualizing back in the day, and it was probably somewhat significance driven for sure, but back in the day when it created my dream life, I used to think about this 1 million subscriber plaque. I used to think about the 100,000 subscriber plaque. And I would imagine it. And the thing that I realized is, is I had to start seeing it as natural because I was putting things on a pedestal. And what I did is I ended up just completely being, it was an end of itself. What I was passionate about was making videos. The funny thing is the more I let go of needing those on my wall, the more they would come. There was like a direct, it was the funniest thing. The more attached to the videos I was, the less good they would do. But the more I would just kind of let go and trust that the information would flow through me, the better things did. So anytime I've, here's the funny thing. Anytime I've let go of a relationship that I was being attached to, anytime I've let go of outcome from uh, how well a video does, anytime I've surrendered to these things, I, I'm not kidding you, so much more comes in because we're emptying out our cup. And as we empty out the old, it's like the universe naturally wants to fill the space. And then also, what does that say when you let go? It's saying, I'm trusting something new. So make the choice to step into the new. It's going to feel scary. You're going to have things come up. I was really, you know, when the first YouTube video I ever put out on YouTube, I called my mom to like the, the post on Facebook because I was worried no one was going to like it. I was really cared. I really cared about what people thought. I was, uh, I had friends and family always asking me what I was up to. 
And some of them I could just tell were like, oh, you're still doing that hobby. You know, I had to really have the vision and commit to the vision and trust it and do it because I enjoy doing it, not because of the results it would get me. And then when you're in that frequency, when you're in that energy, your outer reality begins to change. But the keys and the steps to this process is very simple. One, become aware of your current story, the current beliefs you have, the current attachments you have. Two, identify the payoffs. What are the payoffs that that's getting you? It is serving you. It's just probably negative serving you. It's keeping you safe. It's keeping you comfortable. Then start to look at the opposite payoffs. Start to see how it's not serving you anymore. And then three, make the choice to be the identity you prefer to be, knowing it's who you really are. It's who you prefer to be, trusting that when you step into the unknown, that's where magic happens. When you're doing the known, you're only gonna get more of the known. You're only gonna get what's equal to those thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and uh, actions. And another th important thing I wanna say with creating your dream life, it is letting go, but I do recommend taking action. I took massive action. When you're taking action and you're being the identity you want, it feels natural. But I was for a long time trying to manifest by sitting on the couch. And it was like just thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. It wasn't until I brought it down into action that things really, really changed. So maybe that's something you need to hear right now. Um, be it. When you bean it, it's just natural. It's just easy. It just kind of flows. So that for me was the key. If you want other practical videos like this, can you hit the subscribe button and then also smash the like button if you like this kind of video. If you like the metaphors, let me know. I've been doing a lot of metaphors lately. Also, there is a meditation for wiring in the new self image and letting go of the old one. It'll be in the top of the description box below. It's a very powerful meditation. And uh, when you do that for 21 days, I think it'll absolutely transform your life. So commit to it. Let's all commit to it together. And as we do it, we're also gonna be amplifying that energy too. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, I'll See you on the next one. Peace, much love, and namaste.